Good afternoon. Oops, just tilt it down slightly. Yep. <laughs> Excuse me, adjusting the camera. Um, welcome to my broadcast. The topic today is um, do you know what you're looking for when it comes to dating? In particular, are you dating a sheep in wolf's clothing? Yes, not a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, but a sheep in but a wolf in sheep's clothing. Get that right around. So before I jump into the topic and explain what I mean and hopefully give you some insights to maybe course correct your dating um, criteria, preferences, and actions, let me choose myself and then, and then tell you what this is all about so you might have some angle on what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, hi, my name is Barry Selby. If you haven't seen me talk before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. This is my Facebook Live, by the way. I'll tell you all about that at the back end of the broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker when I remember. Um, I'm also author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. Um, it's a great book, and I am biased because I wrote it. And I'm also a relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. That's all fueled because I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which inspires my work with women, and also is what led to these talks over almost three years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And just as a quick um, recap, these were actually talks I did because after the election, I was kind of cheesed off, <laughs> say it politely, um, because I was very adamant about, I need to stand up and speak about women and respecting women and everything else. But since my background is in relationship coaching and such, I thought I'd, it's become a blend of both. So today's topic is really about the false present, excuse me, the false presentation that you might face when you go out dating. And in particular, where you might meet somebody who appears to be everything you're looking for, the wolf, so to speak, but what you're getting is a sheep. And I'm using that terminology to, be, to flip the script in a way because we're talking about how it's like, you know, a wolf in sheep's clothing is someone who's pretending to be nice, but they're not. I'm talking about the other way around because frankly, there's a lot of people out there who are not, um, they're not as clean as they could be. <laughs> I'm putting that succinctly. So, oh, by the way, this is episode number 850. I didn't say that. Um, and because I've done a lot of these talks every day now for the last almost three years. And I'll tell you at the, back, at the end of the broadcast where you can find the replays to catch all my previous broadcasts because you may want to binge watch some of them or all of them. You never know. So talking to today about dating and the choices we, we make. And I'm saying we because it's both men and women. I'm including the conversation. So this is not just a theory I'm giving you for the ladies in particular, but for all of us. It's sometimes very... It's often, <laughs> let me phrase that, very easy to be suckered in by somebody. And it's a lot of times about the presentation. And I was talking yesterday and the day before about the dating apps and the problems with that and all sorts of issues. So if you haven't seen this broadcast, I recommend watching, watching broadcasts yesterday and the day before, which would be 8.49, 8.48. Yes, it's 8.50. But also, we, we fall into the, I want to say the trap, but it's really just the um, marketing. There's a good word. We're falling into the marketing of what other people present. And I'm sure you've experienced this. We've been on dating apps. You meet somebody who's attractive on the dating app, but the picture's 20 years old. Or when they were 20 pounds heavier, excuse me, 20 pounds lighter. Go the way around. Where they're basically, they was, or maybe you were attracted to the fact that they were standing in front of a nice car. Or with a nice child. Or with a nice dog. You're getting my point, I'm guessing. In fact, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, about, uh, two days ago about this, that there's actually a term, and I did a, dating, I did a Facebook Live about this, a new dating term called dog fishing. If you haven't heard this one, it's going to be fun. I'll just give you this brief in insight. Unlike catfishing, which is a whole different conversation, dog fishing apparently is where people, and it's mostly men apparently, will borrow a friend's dog to pose on their dating pictures for. Or dating, dating, sorry, pose with a dog for their dating pictures to look like they're more caring people. But it's not, their, not even their dog. This is called dog fishing, just so you, you know that new term that came out recently. And so the thing is, a lot of people present their pictures in their dating profiles, the dating sites or dating apps, as contrived, as something they're not really there. Um, I may go on a little rant on dating pictures, let me see, in a minute. Let me focus this point first. So what you see in the dating, in the profiles you're browsing and perusing may not be what you get. That's the sheep in wolf's clothing I'm talking about. You may, in fact, be on dates where you see something about somebody, and when you go out in real life, you've got like, this is not the person I thought I was going to meet. In fact, I talked about this a few days ago. Again, lots of things are coming together now. About how I wish every dating app out there had the profile picture of a person be a video of them talking. Because a lot of times, the pictures you see and the person running in front of you don't feel the same because when they're talking, 
they sound a whole lot different than what you imagined to sound like. And for most people, you tend to hold a higher regard for people before you meet them, so the odds are likely what they sound like or how they articulate or don't articulate is a lot worse than you wanted, or a lot less conscious, educated, whatever that is for you than you wanted. This also comes out of a recent conversation I was, it was on actually a friend's post that I was commenting on about something that a lot of people are missing, particularly men that are missing this, which is basically what I would call emotional maturity. In case you don't know what mat emotional maturity is, it's the ability to deal with your emotions in a mature way, like, duh, that's obvious. But so many people don't know how to do that. For example, if you go out to somebody, or if you are somebody like this, so just reflect without getting upset with me about this, but if you look in the mirror and you look at your own, date, your own experience of emotional expression, and either one, you find yourself being someone who vents a lot when they get upset, they get angry and they just blow up and they, they hit things or knock things down, that's one option. The other side of things is when you get upset or angry, you stuff it down and you do something to distract yourself. Maybe it's drinking or drugs or something else. And you're not expressing it. Either one of those is not emotional maturity. Emotional maturity is the ability to articulate your feelings and express them in a way that is safe, that is constructive, and that is, um, I won't say exhausting it, but it's expressing it so you don't need to keep repeating it. For a lot of people, emotional maturity is not even on their radar. But I hope it's on yours if you're looking for a good conscious relationship because it's a part of the makeup of somebody you want to be with because you want to be with somebody who can know how to be with themselves. And then, because of that, how to be with you. Because that's the other part, by the way. When somebody knows how to deal with their own emotions, they also know how to be with your emotions. Even if you're not sure about them yourself, you have the chance to be with somebody in a way that is very additive and healthy, which is a good part of a healthy relationship. So that's a, that's a bonus. Um, dating pictures I, 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 this has been bugging me for a bit about dating pictures because I've been on the dating apps myself so just you know I've been single and perusing and seeing what's out there and I don't know what the men are posting on the, the dating pictures because I don't look at the men but looking at the women I've seen where three quarters of the pictures in their dating profiles are either wearing sunglasses or 30 feet away or it's just continual pictures of their side angle face with their chin up at a certain angle and it's not even a full body shot these are um, what's the word incomplete <laughs> pictures so if you're somebody who's looking at being on a dating app or you're looking at dating apps and again I don't know what the men are doing but this is what some of the women I've been looking at on the dating apps are doing a very limited viewpoint and it's know somebody and when somebody's dating content is either very generic or is very limited it's hard to get to know what somebody's about and frankly, it's not that intriguing to want to find out more. I'd rather, and this maybe that's my personal opinion, but I'd rather the dating app presentation was more transparent, authentic, and informative so I can go, yes, this person I want to meet. I've seen quite a few dating profiles as well where there's like two pictures and no profile information whatsoever, just the name. Not even, not even well, maybe the age and the location, but not even anything else about the bio preferences, any of that stuff. So, for your dating profile when you're out on the dating apps, dating sites, and looking for dates, put more information out there that's more authentic and also more challenging. Here's the thing I want to recommend. Is be willing to put things down that are true for you, but will challenge somebody to meet you where you are. It's easy sometimes to go the easy route and just do, it's easy to go the easy route, yeah. It's simple to go the easy route, let's put it that way. <laughs> to be with somebody or to meet somebody where you don't present yourself fully either. As much as I'm saying you want to basically make sure you're meeting somebody who is aligned, authentic in who they're being, you want to be that way too. And this is the dance that people have. Sometimes they look complaining about other people's dating profiles, but their one's incomplete or is hidden or, or, or the pictures aren't um, showing you as you really are. Take the steps to first of all clean up your own dating profiles and I've got friends, I know people in the industry who are, that's their business. They help you re write great dating profile content, great, take great pictures, everything else. That's going to be sort of things. I mean, I'm, I'm one of my previous careers, I was a professional photographer. So I, I may be more aware than other people. I want to look at pictures of like, oh, the lighting was bad on that, or their framing was bad, or they don't shop in the picture where I want to see who this person is because they're wearing sunglasses or their background is so distracting, you can't even see them, you know, these sort of things. So there's lots of pieces to this conversation that I want to sort of give you as the uh, suggestions for this. So that's one piece of it, or that's one of the other pieces to it. 
But the other piece I want to make sure you get too is when you're looking for someone to meet and you go on dates, be very clear what is their marketing, as I mentioned earlier, marketing presentation, and what is your intuition, because they're not always the same thing. In fact, I've gotten clear and I've watched people do this too, where you actually know inside that something's off, but you still go ahead. And this is the trap a lot of people fall into where they think they should do something when they shouldn't do something. That when they get clear about what their, um, their inner guidance is telling them, but they're ignoring it because they're either they're desperate for a date or they're trying to be nice or they're hoping the person they're meeting is actually not what they think, what they're feeling is to be accurate. This is this, this wolf in sheep's clothing, excuse me, sheep in wolf's clothing, get the right way around. I flip the script and I keep forgetting to flip it again. Is where you meet somebody who you hold out and you think they're giving me this, but what they're actually being is something else. That discrepancy, 90% of the time, your gut instinct already knows. It's your mind thinking it knows better, which is always a false belief, that is thinking that it's going to be better than it is, but your gut instinct goes, I already know, but you don't necessarily trust it. So what I'm suggesting, rec recommending, inviting you, encouraging you to do, is start learning how to trust your intuition. Frankly, your inner guidance is way more effective than you give it credence for or credit for. And frankly, if we all, and I'm including myself in this, raise the bar of our own, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Our own conscious choosing, our own recommend, our own instinctual references, we'd be in such better shape to find what we're looking for and really, excuse me, find what we're really looking for and be accurate with that. But again, we're so caught up in what we see. Again, this 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 sheep and clothing piece is a thing where we're focused on looking through the lens of what we think we should be looking for and the pictures we see match that versus a gut instinct, which is way more, um, what sort of looking for? Accurate, <laughs> simple word, accurate. And so this dance of relationship, this opportunity for relationship is absolutely fundamentally, completely um, refined and more accurate when we do trust our intuition, which is what our gut instinct largely is tuning into that inner sense of who we are and knowing who we are and then tuning to the inner sense of what we feel in the world as a feeling level, gut instinct, intuition, all these different things will give you much clearer guidance, much more accurate feedback when you go on the dating apps and you meet somebody in real life. I was at Agape this morning, as I usually am on Sunday mornings, and this is why I'm a casual Sunday broadcast, and there were many beautiful women there, as they usually are every Sunday, and quite a few of them are friends of mine. And what I'm also aware of is that I as happens many times beautiful women walk in and they're good looking guys too, too but I'm looking at the women because I'm a guy just to be transparent but I'm aware also is that I watch and observe people in general and particularly women who I notice as being very attractive to see what's going on because there's a part of me now that is refined enough and this is what I'm saying is you can refine this where I can feel into what's going on so I know when they're walking around wounded even though they're protecting themselves really well but I can feel that I can also feel when they've got um I say this politely. <laughs> they had the hooks out to grab into, and I know that feeling, so I can very quickly walk away from it because I've been there before and don't like it. So, but I know that's because I've refined and practiced my own um, inner guidance, and that isn't necessarily something I can say you can. You have to do step one, two, three to do it. Just practice. Just listen to yourself. Practicing your inner guidance will guide you accurately. The more you trust it, it's kind of like the way the intuition works. And one of my teachers said it's a long time ago. Is intuition works all the time, but it gets better when we trust it. It's like, well, yeah, of course. See, but the thing is, when we start disagreeing with it or arguing or overriding it because our mind thinks better, differently, or whatever, that's when our intuition just goes into hiding. It's always there, but you've got to open up and say, let me check in and feel into that if it lines up. So having inner guidance, being tuned into this place and knowing what you want starts below the neck, <laughs> so to speak. Heart, gut, intuition, all that stuff. Let your mind come along for the ride, but don't let it lead. And one of my, one of my uh, quotes from way back in the seminar was talking about how um, the mind is a great servant, but a terrible master. So working from your heart level first is a great guidance too. I'm giving you a whole bunch of feely stuff, you know, like touchy feely stuff, but it works. Trust me, it works for men and for women, by the way, so for both genders. So this is making sense to you. It's, it's, 
um, is it, this isn't necessarily what I would say um, it's like black and white steps to take to get where you want to go but it's good action steps to take anyway start trusting start listening start feeling to your own um, inner guidance to see what happens so so what else I think that's really it I want to, it was a quick broadcast I want to talk about this feeling so trust your intuition stay connected lean into it and get clear about what it is you really want if I can be of help to you that's my gift I will put some links in the comments for you to check out things I have I have included in my book I did mention my book so I'll put a link in the comments to reach out to me for a chat if you're really looking for that help ladies if you're looking for love in all the wrong places either working with me is a good way of doing it I also have a great online course called Attract the Man You Want I'll put a link in for that as well because it will help you get where you want to go it's a self-guided course and it's also available with coaching as well if you want that so those three will be in the comments this is my daily Facebook Live that I do every day at 5pm Pacific Time right here on my personal page and if you want to catch me live next time come to Barry Selby on Facebook and you can there's a link somewhere there's a button around here somewhere you can clap off and more, more information you can click on be notified next time I go live 5pm Pacific Time right here is where you find me um, if you haven't seen me before why not and if you want to catch my replays because there are plenty of them out there you can find most of them not all of them but most of them are on my business page on Facebook which is Barry Selby author please like my page but if you want to find all of them my YouTube channel is where they all are because I do back them up every day if you want to get to my YouTube channel it's also Barry Selby all my social media is Barry Selby um, which is YouTube, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby if you go there and you can subscribe to my channel there's a playlist on there called messages from the mask and you find all my broadcasts from this one all the way back to the beginning yes even to number one you can go back and see my first broadcast three years ago so you can check this all out um, if you have any questions thoughts about this broadcast please let me know in the comments you can reach out to me if you want help over social media and um, I hope this made some sense to you hi Catherine thank you you're very welcome I hope this made sense to you um, again thank you for watching as always this is my daily um, broadcast I was gonna say another word it's not only it's not news broadcast information education and 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 uh, inspirational message I'll call it that so thank you for watching thanks for being with me and I see you in my broadcast um, thanks always for being here I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for something new and different take care of yourself and I'll see you again tomorrow take care